Hello, everyone. Um, um, yeah, so I'm 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 Pavel Belica, and this talk will be about uh, EVM and EVMC, which is a portable API for Ethereum virtual machine. Um, I'm a software. Uh, software developer. I specialized in C++, and currently I'm working uh, mostly in the CPP Ethereum project. And uh, I also uh, I'm out the author of EVM JIT, which is uh, uh, alternative uh, EVM implementation that uh, translates uh, EVM bytecode to native. Uh, machine language and and I also try to come up with the API uh, for for EVM and uh, that is called EVMC um, so this talk will be um, will have two parts uh, first one I would like to uh, explain uh, what exactly am I talking about and what I mean by by uh, EVM uh, API and EVM interface. And in the second part, I would like to um, show what, what have been done so far, what we want to do in the near future, and explain uh, some design decisions we made so far uh, to, to be able for you to uh, better understand uh, why things look as they look at the moment. So EVM, um, the Ethereum virtual machine, um, one of the most important uh, components of Ethereum software and Ethereum e ecosystem. So it's, uh, in short words, a uh, virtual machine that actually can execute uh, small uh, programs or small scripts called uh, smart contracts. And uh, yeah, where it is, uh, every uh, every Ethereum client, at least full full nodes, have EVM somewhere inside. Uh, usually, there is one implementation of that, uh, but we have some examples where uh, EVM clients can actually have more of them, and uh, and uh, CPP Ethereum is one of the examples here. Um, but uh, the problem I would like to address is the fact that EVMs are somehow embedded inside the client. You can have more or less indirect access to it, to EVM, uh, through JSON RPC, some test RPC systems, um, uh, VM tracing, um, storage backlog, and, and so on. Uh, but uh, what what I try to address is I would like this uh, this composition to be look more or less like this one. So uh, this thin layer uh, that actually connects EVMs to Ethereum clients to be uh, to be very well specified, very well documented, and uh, to be also usable in. Uh, from different programming languages. And also what we can, can add to this, uh, to this uh, scheme is to be able to actually plug in the, the same uh, EVM implementation to different clients. Okay, so EVMC is one of the possible solutions to this problem, and it's it's exactly what I what I what I meant before. It's EVM API that uses C language to to connect the, these two uh, now separated components: the the EVM Ethereum virtual machine uh, to be connected with uh, Ethereum client. And uh, why, why C language was chosen? Uh, not because it's the most beautiful one, but it happens that um, 
C is actually accessible for many, many programming languages. Uh, the obvious examples are C and C++, but uh, for many popular languages that are around, uh, you can actually uh, at least use some C libraries and use execute functions from C libraries from that languages. Um, I tried all this stuff uh, with, with Go using the C Go tool and also uh, in Python using uh, CFFI uh, library but I'm sure there are, there are other examples when you can at least uh, use uh, C libraries in in more uh, more high level, more abstract languages. And the uh, second important part of that is we want to have uh, polymorphic interfaces there. So we would like to be able to use different uh, to switch between different uh, EVM implementations and runtime. Not that we want to build a client with this one and decide on the, on the build time what, what actually implementation we like to use. Uh, yeah, we want to have a switch that user can actually use to decide what kind of backend they want for, for its task. And uh, and third, uh, third important part we, we took account of uh, to, to make some design decisions is uh, composability. So the composability means actually uh, we can do something like that. When having some concrete implementations of VM, we can add more and more layers on top of that that actually delegate the execution to the lower layers, but uh, on the upper layer, you can make some uh, additional decisions where actually you want to send your code to. So for example, uh, if we can uh, consider uh, interpreter and JIT-like uh, EVM, uh, you might want to actually have a, and, uh, top layer that actually decides if the code should go to the, to the JIT one or to the interpreter one. And the, the top layer can actually, for example, uh, count the number of executions of particular code. If, if we have some hot code that is executed in many transactions, we may want to actually translate that using the JIT EVM to, to some native machine code and speed up the execution. But that may not, may not have sense if, if, you want, if, if the code is not frequent enough to actually uh, pay the cost of overhead of doing the translation upfront and not having, uh, yeah, may, may, may not make a lot of sense. The, the second example of, of such, some, such composition can be, uh, uh, having actually different languages in smart contract. If we consider uh, the proposed EWASM and EVM 1.0, uh, we can just add very simple uh, layer on top of that that actually can recognize if the smart contract uses the, the web assembly like uh, language or uh, EVM 1 uh, bytecode. So how actually this EVMC looks like? Uh, this is actually the single file, uh, a single C header file, and uh, includes uh, declarations on functions and structs, and also all the documentation is, is, is this file in the form of, of comments. So this is actually the, the only source you, you, you should uh, care about and I, I paid attention to actually have good enough documentation to understand how it works, uh, just reading the single file. And at the moment, this is uh, part of my EVMG project uh, where uh, a 
and the, uh, as long I am experimenting with that and the API is not finished yet, uh, we it's included in, in this project. Okay, so um, the whole uh, the whole design has some kind of two uh, two parts, uh, two sides, and one is uh, related to the client to the client side, and one is related to the EVM itself. Uh, on the client side, uh, what have to be done? You you need to implement implement some context class. And contact class uh, provides a virtual methods uh, and can answer questions coming from from EVM. And these questions are something like, "Get me the balance of given account," or "Get me the storage at the given storage slot for for given contract." Uh, all this information cannot be provided to the EVM upfront because we don't want to send the whole state to the EVM to execute smart, uh, smart contracts. But DVM uh, need, uh, need a way to actually extract this information on demand. Mm. And on, on the second side, on the EVM side, uh, there is a EVM class. And EVM class, um, it's quite simple. Uh, there is a way to actually construct the EVM instance uh, and uh, there is a way to, uh, uh, to destroy it and uh, the core function is actually uh, execute function when the information what is to be executed is encoded in, in, in a message object and also the context is provided uh, for the execution and if EVM uh, uses this context uh, interface to to uh, to ask for more info, uh, more more data if needed. So, in case you would you would like to implement new client, but you don't want to uh, in the same time implement EVM there, uh, you would like to use some of uh, EVMC uh, compatible EVMs available. Uh, what you have to do? Uh, your job is to implement the context class, and uh, there are eight virtual methods to, that have to be implemented. And you have also encode your information what to execute in the in the message in the message structure. And uh, if you would like to, for example, implement the, the EVM, but you don't care about the rest of the Ethereum client, like network stack, NAND storage, uh, database, and so on, uh, all you need to do is to implement the create and destroy pair of functions and the execute one. So not to be confused, it, uh, this design operates uh, on the object-oriented uh, uh, concepts, uh, but on the way you, you will do that, uh, you will have to translate it down to the C, so it gets more obscure and, uh, and complex. So uh, what we have so far with this, uh, so as, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, the C++ client have actually two, two EVMs and one is a uh, classic interpreter and it actually does not use the EVMC but we plan to do it uh, in the next, in the near future. Uh, but EVMJIT, uh, the JIT-like EVM, uses the EVMC interface and it's, it's compatible with the recent hard fork of uh, Byzantium. Mm, there is also the Hira project that uh, a prototype of uh, Ethereum client with EWASM backend and there is also uh, a prototype of EVM Im implemented uh, purely in C language. Uh, I also prepared uh, some time ago a prototype of GEF uh, with the EVMJIT plugged in 
and the Python Python client with EVMJIT plugged in. Uh, this still needs some work, and it requires updates to the current status of the code, but it's quite fun to, to play with that. And what we want to do uh, next. Uh, the, the missing piece of EVMC API is, is VM tracing, and this is uh, a showstopper for a moment because we, do, we cannot replace existing VMs uh, completely because this missing feature is important in, 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 other, in other places. Uh, we would like, if this is in place, we would like to move the CPP interpreter uh, to, to, to use the EVMC, EVMC interface as well. And I also plan to, to release experimental GAF with EVMJIT uh, as a virtual machine there. Uh, recently also uh, someone uh, considered uh, to using this interface together with a uh, uh, fast testing uh, project. Okay, that was uh, all from mine. Um, thank you for your attention and uh, in case some questions I'm available for uh, yeah for whole Defcon around thank you. Thank you.